Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Silver Quill. We are about to review the most inappropriately named episode in the entire series. Yes, that is true. There's no way for me to justify the title, but... <laughs> Yeah, uh, let's just r- hop right into it and not dilly dally because I'm sure that if we prolong the title reveal, people are going to. You know what? They already know they're reading the title in the podcast thingy, whatever it is. Okay, yeah. Uh, in this week's episode, we are going to review season 8, episode 5. Episode title Granny's Gone Wild. <laughs> and you, you know what, Silver? Ah, I am not even going to. S- say that I'll be surprised if I Google... You know what, Ed, folks at home, do not Google this. Do, do not Google the title. Yes. Yes. Do, do not. <sighs> so, anywho, <laughs> in this episode, Granny Smith and her friends head to Las Pegasus and Rainbow Dash tags along as their chaperone so she can ride the best roller coaster before it closes. So, let's get into first impressions. Silver, what do you think of said episode? Well... It highlights some of the strengths and weaknesses of this current season, because in part, it has characters who are secondary, lower tier. We get to see them having fun, being at their best. They become much more interesting characters uh, as a result. It doesn't reflect well, however, on Rainbow, who is mostly just there to shut down their fun, and Applejack, who provides the uh, pressure to shut down said fun. The big takeaway from this, though is a certain pony who's just introduced but may have significant relations with another fan-favorite character. And we'll get into that. But overall, I was just like, yeah, it's it's an okay episode. It happened. It was entertaining when it got at the peak energy. But it also, like I say, highlights some issues. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And as for me, I kind of enjoyed this episode. This episode was a lot of fun. Um... I remember talking to you about this episode when it first aired and I was very excited for this episode. And upon the second rewatch, I still hold that tag of I was having fun and being excited. It was not as cringy as I remember, but still, this episode was a lot of fun. But besides that, uh, I'm going to save my thoughts until we go into the review. So, anywho, if you have not watched this episode yet, uh, pause here and, well, enjoy. Welcome back. How do you like it? Was it fun? So, let us recap it for you guys again with our twist on things. We start off with our hero, Rainbow Dash, uh, calling it a day after training at the Wonderbolts Academy and suddenly hearing Sorin and his friends talking about the best roller coaster ride ever. Uh, what was it called again? The Wild Blue Yonder. Yes, the best roller coaster ever. This is a special event because uh, Misty Fly there. This is the first time we've seen her outside her uniform. Misty Fly is the um the light yellow Pegasus with the uh sky blue streaked hair. All right. Main thing of a jig. <laughs> We can see her cutie mark. Look at her tush. <laughs> look at her tush. Look, look, look at her tush. Okay. What are those? Uh, is that a butterfly? It's a cutie mark, Norman. How do you not know a cutie mark by this time? Of I, I know. I was just wondering, what is it? Like, what is it specifically? What? Let's see here. As I zoom in and make it and become uncomfortably close with her personal space. <laughs> What's that? Because I get, well, I'm apparently following the Pinkie Pie school. <laughs> uh, I believe that it is a butterfly being carried on the wind. Or is that a cloud with a butterfly? Huh. I took it to mean wind, but let's ask. We should see if she meets Fluttershy. Fluttershy, like, oh, do you like butterflies too? And, and Misty Fly would be all embarrassed because she doesn't want to admit it, <laughs> even though it's her cutie mark. Oh, it's okay. Shaw. It's all good. <laughs> Actually, I should correct myself. I got a, there's a screenshot with a better view. And you're right. I think it is butterflies around a cloud. It looks like it. <laughs> there we go. All right. Yeah. But anywho. As we continue on, uh, Sorin keeps talking about the amazing roller coaster ride that he has ever ridden, and it's kind of a Wonder Bolt tradition that every Wonder Bolt unit or every Wonder Bolt, uh, how how do you say, every Wonder Bolt personnel, every member, yes, thank you. So every Wonder Bolt member has to ride it or has ride it before, 
uh, and they showed awesome pictures of roller coaster rides. You know, the one where you do silly stuff like do crazy poses and whatnot. And they did it too. I especially love Spitfires and Misty Fly, where they did the chest thing. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's a health hazard. You know what? You you do say that, but I seen a lot of roller coaster pictures that they do that. So yeah, and most of them are glued down, so it's okay, I guess. I don't know a chest set though. You can't glue that down. Oh, that you can glue the defeats pieces. the whole point. You can glue the pieces. What good is a king when his pawns will not move? <laughs> I don't know. But anywho, um, Rainbow Dash is hype and she talks to her friends all about it. And Applejack brings up the most important question. So, you write this before? And Rainbow Dash says, uh, no. Here's one of the first things that is sort of the weakness of Season 8. She proves Naysay right because she's not teaching her class. She's just going on and on about this roller coaster. It's very unfortunate I get the impression that the main six are doing a good job because this school is active for at least nine months. And yet we only get to see them when they're doing their job wrong. <laughs> Which means that they're suffering from Princess Celestia syndrome. <laughs> it sounds like it. But to me, I think this is just Rainbow Dash being a hyper before teaching and stuff. You know, you, you get some of those teachers, but not all the time. But yes, um, Rainbow Dash is just hyper. I don't think I've ever seen a teacher go that gaga outside of class. Yeah, probably. But one could hope. <laughs> but one could hope. So anywho, uh, Rainbow Dash goes to Applejack asking her if she could uh, teach her class while she goes to Las Pegasus to ride the roller coaster. And Applejack says, yeah, sure, I cover your class. But on one condition. And that is, you have to babysit or grandma sit the elderly. No! Oh, the horror. The treachery. Yeah. Rainbow Dash just sees, oh, uh, Granny Smith? Oh, yeah, I can do that. There's no problem. Until some of her other friends comes along. Who are her other friends? I, I kind of forgot. Uh, I remember. They're not just friends. They're family. We have Apple Rose, uh, Auntie Applesauce, and of course, Goldie Delicious. Yay. And they're the gold horseshoe gals. Yay. Also, before we go too far, can I just say Rainbow Dash has the best pouty face? Yeah, that is so cute. You cannot say no to that. I defy you to say no to that. I, if you could say no to that face, then you are cold and dead on the inside. Oh, man. Silver, would you give me 100 bucks show Rainbow Dash pouty face? I would do that for a Klondike bar. <laughs> uh, but anywho, yes. Uh, Rainbow Dash have to babysit the, uh, the Golden Horseshoe Gals and... Rainbow Dash says, nah, I, I don't want to. And Applejack says, sure, yeah, um, but if you don't want to ride a roller coaster, that's fine. <laughs> and uh, why do I feel like Applejack here is being a bit trollish to Rainbow? To be honest, it seems like a moment from Scrubs. I'm in a rare position of power <laughs> over you, and I'm not letting go. Of course, then Dr. Cox gets mad and grabs JD and there is much violence implied. Oh, well. <laughs> but anywho, R Rainbow Dash just says yes. And I'm guessing the next day or the few hours later, they're off to Las Pegasus via Blimp. After poor Big Macintosh suffers a <laughs> broken spine. Don't worry, I think Sugar Bell will massage that one out. And she'll probably tease her for it. So, Big Mac... How did it feel to be carrying all that those pussies? <laughs> ah, I'm not percent sure if Sweetie Belle should work on, on that one. <laughs> Norman, we're in an episode called Granny's Gone Wild. Nothing is sacred anymore. <laughs> oh, God. Ah, but yes. <clears throat> so, anywho. Ooh, uh, conniptions. Yeah, but anywho. Uh, Rainbow Dash says, yeah, I'll take care of the elderly and stuff. And why are they still late? And Applejack gave uh, Rainbow Dash a list of what not to do or what to do. And said list is kind of a downer. Like, ooh, yeah. Make sure they get plenty of naps. Don't let them get too excited. Honestly, it's kind of funny given what we're going to see. I have some questions about how, how this tradition has gone on because Big Mac is the one who's been escorting them in the past. Yep, yep. And... Well, I guess we'll hold off until 
uh, until we get the actual events. But still. But yeah, talking about let's go, the grandmas are finally on the blimp. And up, up, and away, they go. Yeah. With Cherry Berry man, uh, managing the balloon, which I find kind of funny. She's mostly associated for having the balloon that Twilight and company are always riding in. The one from the opening credits. Did anything happen to that blimp? Nope. It's still in use, but I guess she has more than one. Oh, uh, yeah. Was she the manager for it? I, I thought that was always Twilight's blimp. Yep. It's hers because uh, in Spike at Your Service... When he loses track, it's she who has to go retrieve the blimp or balloon. And I will just be glad that, you know, nothing's trying to kill her. Because for some reason, Cherry Berry is like a Darwin Award waiting to happen. (laughs) Uh, I'm sure it'll all be good. And here's the even funnier part. Uh, She's an Earth pony who wants to fly. Clearly, the universe is trying to kill her because she's defying the natural order. You don't mess with the order. Hey. I've seen OCs that want to do that, and it's all good in my books, man. Live the dream. Do what you want. Oh, yes, because as we all know, OCs are so readily accepted by the universe. <laughs> it's, just, it's not fair. Yeah, but anywho, but anywho, um, once they're up in the air, the grannies, uh, you know, do some small chit-chat. And Rainbow Dash did the unthinkable, which is ask an old person for a story. No... <laughs> I think she said they don't want... I thought she said they don't want to hear a story. That's not what I heard. <laughs> they said that they've heard the tree story. Norman, do you need one of those ear megaphone things? No, I already have a piece, so I'm good. <laughs> Norman, you're armed and dangerous. <laughs> no, uh, I, I'm guessing Silver forgot, but I'm hearing life in Morno, so yeah. <laughs> I likely did, but... <laughs> Yeah, but it's all Moving good. Animal. It's all good. <laughs> so anywho, they arrive at Las Pegasus. Um, I'm guessing probably five hours later. <laughs> it was a slow, slow approach. But here's the here's the grandest accomplishment of Las Pegasus. Mm-hmm. They have an Alicorn workforce. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, here's the thing. In one panel, uh, you see a stallion who has both a horn and wings. And he's just backing it in. So, okay, animation error. Cut to a wider shot where there's now two Alicorn workers. It's like, that that can't just be, that can't be an animation error. Why is this happening? Okay, okay, okay. I, I have a, uh, what you call this, um, hit cannon theory for this. Uh, it's just a jacket thingy where you just put on, you know, just for show. That color matches? Yeah, why not? Perfectly with their coat? Why not, right? Probably the high rarity for it. I'm just going to say that there there are indeed male alicorns. It's just that none of them are royalty because you <laughs> you, you can't get ahead of this here mayor's world. Rah. I never noticed that. <laughs> Rah. Well, here's something else I've just now noticed. There's a balloon coming in that's uh, purple and red. Mm-hmm. Spoiled milk, or well, now spoiled rich. Mm-hmm. Is in that gondola. Yeah, I, I wanted to point that out, but yeah, you, you beat me to the punch. So yeah. Um, ha, ha, ha. Spoils there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she ditched her husband for a weekend, which uh, probably not going to go over very well. Yeah, it's all good. By the way, uh, Cherry Berry, her clone is there. Cherry Berry's clone? Oh, no. Oh, no. The pod ponies are upon us. <laughs> yeah. But hey, uh, we've been through this for eight years now. And we learn to say that animation errors like this don't really matter. They're reusing assets so we can have a good show. So let's just enjoy the show and not think about it too much. I'm thinking about the Alicorn workers. Oh, yeah, you can think about that. But for Cherry Berry's clone, yeah, they're, they're just doing stuff. Yeah, yeah, don't think about that one too hard. <laughs> is, is Cherry Berry's clone an Alicorn? Because we've seen those in the background before. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, but anyway um, let's carry on. So Rainbow Dash is very excited because the hotel that they are staying holds the roller coaster that Rainbow Dash wants to ride. So that's awesome. The Golden Horseshoe Gals are excited for, well, uh, going to do what they want to do. And I think first on the agenda is Horseshoe Toss. Well, first on the agenda is hitting on uh, the bellhop. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, yeah, she... She ain't, uh... 
Oh my, you are a strong pony, ain't you, Sugar Hox? And it's like, you know, I always figured that it'd be Goldie Delicious who'd be the cougar. <laughs> oh, wow. But, um, yeah, before we head into the bellhop scene, we have to see the huge double um, side doors. How do you call those? Uh, double? Um, big doors. Double doors. Yeah, double doors. And it's adorned with flim and flam. I, I'm guessing Granny Smith doesn't really care about that anymore. I figure... In some ways, Las Pegasus is like the best place for these two. Yep. They can scam ponies royal, and yet they could do it legally with no fear of repercussion. Mm -hmm. Or minimal fear. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They've always been big on cheat, cheating the rules, but without putting themselves at true risk. Mm -hmm. True, 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 true. Yeah, but and yet, this is, kind, this is kind of getting into spoiler territory. There may be an episode coming up where you realize that their need for con jobs is is so powerful that now they actually give up a good thing. Oh, no. Is that a future episode? It it may be. I mean, it, right now it's sort of rumor. Oh, no. It's in the rumor rip, rumor mill. So I don't know if I should say it on this here podcast. Nah, man. Like, I, I don't even know. So, yeah, let, let's, not, let, let's not go there. So, yeah, um, once they're in, episodes flirts with the bellhop and oh my goodness oh oh god oh somebody help me oh Sunny, you're like a drop of water in a desert if you know what i mean oh, oh, oh. down there oh so anywho rainbow dash suggests that the granny should go to bed and yeah uh yeah the, the granny agrees yeah 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 <laughs> so yeah rainbow dash gets to go to the roller coaster yay and has to wait for a long, long line. This reminds me of BronyCon. <laughs> I wouldn't know. I'm always a panelist of some sort. Oh, he sounds so arrogant. <laughs> Boo, you suck. <laughs> yes, how dare I present for the fandom's enjoyment. <laughs> so, anywho, um, <clears throat> Rainbow Dash feels guilty about it because a mayor says, oh, isn't it fun where you have to wait in line and not think about anything and no and don't have any responsibilities and rainbow dash gives up and walks away while giving her spot to the mayor in question so yeah touche magic hallway touche magic hallway how come why why what what oh uh, again i'm thinking of scrubs don't know why i'm in i guess i'm in the scrubs mood <laughs> uh there's there's a scene where the lead character is walking through the hallway just reflecting on life and responsibilities and son of a gun all the other characters are in the hallway stating the exact opposite. He says that people never apologize. There's his mean boss apologizing to his wife. And people don't open up about their feelings. There's her friends. There's his friends open up about their feelings. So he, JD just looks around and is like, touche, magic hallway. <laughs> so here, Rainbow is a victim of the magic hallway. Oh, no. So, yeah, uh, once back in her room, she checks out on the grannies. Uh, and, and grannies are still asleep. Until she noticed that they're not. And Rainbow Dash lost track of her. Oh no, that's on the list of keeping an eye on the grannies. Oh no. Oh. Which leads me to my question. If Big Mac is their escort every year, and this is an annual thing, do they ditch Big Mac every year or has he just come to accept it and maybe he goes a little hog wild too? Yep. <laughs> I think there's an understanding between all of them where... Big Mac just says, "You guys go have fun. I'm gonna do my. I'm gonna do my own thing. Don't overdo it. Don't let Applejack know. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. All right. So, yay! Big Mac goes to the buffet. All you can eat buffet, if I remember right. What was it? A dollar or something like that? They keep you there, so you got trapped and can never escape. There's no escape. I don't know. I can think of some wilder things he got into. Oh my! Yeah. <laughs> what happens? What happens? To Las Pegasus stays in Las Pegasus." Yep. And now Sugar Bell can never know. <laughs> roll, roll it back in. And yes, Rain Rainbow Dash goes to the arcade and tries to find the grannies. And we are greeted to a lovely couple, Lyra and Bon Bon. Yay! And, and Applejack just photobombed them. <laughs> oh, gosh. Ah, uh, it's tough when you get in on, cu on couple photos. That's just wrong. Yep, yep. So Rainbow Dash is in a panic and meets this one stallion and asks him if he he's seen any uh, elderly mares and uh, the stallion says uh, gal you just described 
um, half of the people in this place. It's like saying, have you seen an old person in Florida? Have you seen a crazy person in Florida? <laughs> uh, just point in one direction. I'm sure you'll find one. <laughs> oh, and God. It, here's the thing. I think that's that guy may be uh, an homage to G1's quarterback, one of the big brother ponies. Oh, really now? Let's see here. I will have to send you a link that you might link to our our listeners. But yes, there is a blue stallion with a football cutie mark. Uh, he, in G one, his mane was was quite blue. This this fellow, his his mane is more blonde. But foot, but the look is uncanny. And the Big Brother ponies were the only male characters, and they only appeared in one episode. Quite blue, or okay, um, because. Uh, the I see quarterback. I see salty. <laughs> uh, he's been playing too much Overwatch. Yep. So quarterback. He has a pink football helmet. That's cute. <laughs> so quarterback. Oh yeah, that's him. Oh, there's a bit of a difference between uh quarterback and um this guy here. So yay. But it may. I, I still see the football cutie mark is probably the big connector for me. Mm, but you could also see the same for Rarity's dad. Mm, indeed, but he doesn't even begin to match the color scheme. Oh, true that. True that. And there are no mustaches on these G one ponies. <laughs> oh, true that too. But anywho, so let's see. We hear a chant calling out "Goli delicious." Rainbow Dash notice and. Sees Goldie Delicious is on a roll at Horseshoe Toss. And yo, she is doing awesome. And Rainbow Dash cheers on for her. Until she remembers saying that, Oh no, you can't let them be too excited. Oh no. Applejack killer of joy. Yep. And Rainbow Dash swipes in and kind of ruins the game. Thanks, Rainbow Dash. You just cost us $10,000 in prize money. Great. Great on ya. Way to go. Rainbow Dash is worst pony in this episode. Oh, it's so sad. Mm, yes, yes, yes. But anywho, Granny Smith says, oh, well, you know what we can do? Let's go to that. She points at the poster and Rainbow Dash is excited because it's a roller coaster. Yay! Until she pans to the right. And it's the buffet. No. Oh, no. <laughs> Rainbow Dash doesn't get a chance to ride the roller coaster. Oh, sad life. Yeah, but anywho, at the lunchtime buffet, Granny Smith wants to gorge on some nachos. Yum, yum. Those look nice. He has cheese, jalapenos, and I'm guessing those are diced onions and nacho chips. And yay, awesomeness. I would love some right now. Yeah, you're making everybody hungry. I know. But anywho, Rainbow Dash gets reminded of what Applejack said. They can't eat anything solid. They must eat soft things like soup. And Granny Smith states out the obvious. And she says, And you were supposed to be the fun one. What? Like, eh, eh, what? Rainbow's honors impugned a lot this season. First, uh, Gallus said, I thought you'd be cooler, <laughs> Professor Egghead. <laughs> oh, no. My pride. Oh. But still, yes, uh, let's carry on because... Granny Smith calling Rainbow Dash a downer. Yes, well, a downer. By the way, I, I'm searching through the uh, transcript of this episode. That stallion I compared to quarterback, I don't think he's ever been officially named because the they list his name in quotes. Tight end, which is something I'm pretty sure the grannies would comment on. Oh, my. Oh, but, yes, I went there. Yes. But anywho, um, the grannies talk about what they're going to do next, and they say that, Hey, you know what? Let's go cut a rug. And, oh, God, Rainbow Dash is so not into this. So, yeah. So, you know what? Let's go to the dance club, baby. Whoop, whoop. DJ in charge is DJ Poon Tree. So, get your requests on. Yo. And we get to see the grannies cut a rug. Woohoo. And Apple Rose is cutting it like a something, something, something. Ah, uh, something, something, something. The greatest dancer of all. Mm-hmm. And yes. Like the song goes, hold me closer, tiny something, 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 something. <laughs> uh, yes. But anywho, uh, while the grannies are dancing, two stallion notices them. And oh my god. 
<laughs> Granny Smith does the move. Oh, God, no. Please help me, Silva. I can't, Norman. But you just have to take it. If anything, I would like to show you this clip in slow motion. So it's like... But anyway, so these two ponies are Big Buck and Jackpot. And I don't know why, but they seem to be really interested in the grannies and gave them five tickets for their magic show. And awesome. And because of Apple Rose dancing, they get noticed by Senpai and they're going to be up on stage. Awesomeness. Yay. Not going to talk about the elephant in the room? Oh, 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 you're talking about the lady that Rainbow Dash gave her spot in? Yeah, she comes and tells Rainbow Dash, thank you for giving your place in line because uh, that was the most awesome ride ever and I heard that they're going to close it down. So yay, thanks. Oh, yay. That, that, that is not the elephant in there. That is more the art, aardvark in the room. Oh, oh, Easy oh. mistake to make. Oh, um, no, 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 no. Oh, you're talking about uh, Big Buck. He does remind me of another background pony in the pack i seen before with that same color tone. It's a mare, but I don't remember. Oh, yes. Is this? I have to, I'm still looking at the transcript to see these guys' names again. It's Jackpot. Big... Jackpot? Jackpot and Big Bucks. Bucks or Buck? Okay. Yeah, B-U-C-K-S. Bucks. Bucks. Yeah, so yeah, he does remind me of that. And somehow, Jackpot there. I, I don't know, man. Like, he, he, he seems... Very familiar. Like, I can't put my tongue on it, or I could put my finger on it. Like, huh. I'm sure he put his tongue on something. But I'm tsh. Like, oh, man, Silver, could you help me on this, man? Like, mm. Well, let's just say that this inspired a tremendous amount of uh, fan art and probably fan fiction about a certain great and powerful pony trying to confront him, saying, I am your daughter! And he's out on the ledge going, that's not true! That's impossible! And she's all like, shoot your feelings! You know it to be true! <laughs> no! No! Fells down. You owe me a lot in heart swarming presents! I'll never present you! <laughs> uh, yes, so the elephant in the room. Jackpot here looks similar to Trixie. And yes, I remember going... Uh, I like for a better word, sweetie bot, please help me. Ape That's not a word! On this. What? It's like, what? <laughs> I was going crazy. If I were looking at the chat when this was happening, I bet they were going crazy too. There are some questions as to whether or not uh, he knows he's Trixie's father. And yeah, wow, that would that would mean a lot of things. Uh-huh, especially uh-huh. in a kid's show. Yeah, and here's the thing. Uh, I've seen a lot of fan theories going to the side of, hey, um, Jackpot is a divorcee. So he, well, kind of doesn't really know something like that. Or he's on the road so much that he doesn't really visit the family and so on and blah, blah, blah. And there's also the story of uh, Jackpot here is a bad dad and Trixie kind of doesn't relate and whatnot. And so, yeah, there's a lot of fan theories. Well, what do you think, Silva? Well, one, I appreciate that folks have been, uh, in a lot of the artwork I see, they use Trixie's mom as shown in the My Little Pony comics. Yeah, 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 that too. The, the point with the sunflower, although she doesn't have a name yet, just Trixie's mom. And what I often see is that I get the impression that maybe this mayor had a wild weekend in, uh, in Las Pegasus, but Trixie may not have ever gotten to meet her father face to face. Yeah, that seems to be the team. I don't hear a lot of uh, divorce commentary. More, he, this guy may not know. Mm, true that too. Uh, but I don't know. I, mean, I, I would love, okay, in my hit canon world, I would love it if Jackpot here knows, but because he wants to support the family, so he has to go on the road being a magician, and that's how Trixie is inspired by becoming a magician too. One never knows. Mm-hmm. But that's my um, wish case scenario. But yeah, who knows? Um, it's one of those cases, right? But anywho, uh, we go on to the next scene where we get to see the magic show. Yay! And before I carry on, does Jackpot look like Willy Wonka? Willy Wonka. That's right. I have snozberries for the audience. <laughs> and I'm not talking about the Johnny Depp Willy Wonka. No, no, we're, t- we're talking about the Gene Wilder, Willy Wonka. Uh-huh. 
in my eyes, the more enjoyable Willy Wonka. And the more insane one. Especially that boat ride. What, what's that about? <laughs> There's no earthly way of knowing. God, could you just imagine watching that in the theaters, not knowing, thinking that this is a kid's show, suddenly that happened, and like, uh, what did the nostalgia chick say? Big lip alligator moment? Yeah, that, that was it. <laughs> well, honestly, I just say uh, pants to be darkened moment. <laughs> yes. But anywho, uh, the magicians do their show, and they require a guess. And they invite the go uh the golden horseshoe gals to come on stage and yes, be there be, and be their assistant. And for this trick, they need to drown them in a tank and see if they could escape. And Rainbow Dash panics. <laughs> I just love the inner Applejack here saying that oh what's the line? What's the line? Do I really have to say anything? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and Rainbow Dash ruins the magic show. And <laughs> here's here's the tell that if Jackpot here is Trixie's dad or not, he does the uh, smoke bomb escape trick. Yep, they're related. Although he does it right. Oh, wait, no, he doesn't. They Yep. Yeah, they just run us off stage. Okay, yeah, definitely blood related. Why does this also remind me of Kung Pao? <laughs> what doesn't? <laughs> Reminds me of the smoke bomb thing. Remember where the samurai was throwing this? Ah. Oh yeah, he's pr- he's probably just shaking his hoof at, at uh, Rainbow the going, yeah. <laughs> uh, you go there, I go home. <laughs> so anywho, the golden horseshoe gal kind of confronts Rainbow Dash, saying, "Why, why be a downer? Why are you uh, spoiling our fun? Oh, what's the big idea, man? What's the big deal? I thought you were the fun one." Like, the reckless go-getter, um, something, something, something. Like, you're boring. Like, what the hell? And Rainbow Dash just says, like, I I, I, I came here because I want to ride the roller coaster. And Applejack says that I, I need to take care of you guys. And I, I, oh, there's a list. And yeah, I was just trying to be responsible. But at the same time, I want to do a fun thing too. So, uh, and the horseshoe girls kind of laugh and says that, oh, you just want to ride the roller coaster? Why do you say that from the very beginning? I love the fact that Granny face hoofs when she hears Applejack put her up to this. It's like, ah, my granddaughter, she's the death of fun. <laughs> uh, yeah. They're going to have a, like a long talk. Don't you be sending Phyllis to ruin our fun again. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. But, oh, it does bring up the question, yeah, Silver, about if Applejack was in charge, would this happen too? I mean, like, yeah, man. Knowing Applejack, she probably would have wouldn't have checked the beds for them sleeping. So she she'd have been faked out the entire weekend. We know how to run rings around my granddaughter. <laughs> She's very easily thwarted. Yep, just throw an apple and she'll be mesmerized by it. <laughs> uh, so anywho, we see the horseshoe gals walk up to the roller coaster like a boss and cutting lines and whatnot. And yeah, the explanation is that. Uh, they've been coming to the casino for moons now, and they're kind of a uh, big wig here. Like they're the VIPs, and they have privileges. And said privileges is to cut in line. And I also think that if you're a senior citizen, you also get the privilege too. So yeah. And so yeah, they uh, lines. I don't have time for lines, Sonny. I could be dead in ten minutes. <laughs> I'm just playing it up. Now get out of my way. Yeah. And Rainbow Dash gets to ride the ride of her life, and we get photos. Yay! I especially like the photo where uh, Goldie, no, not Goldie, uh, one of their dentures is just coming loose. Yep. And here's here's the thing, Silver. If you notice on the third photo, you get to see a cat jumping off. What? That, that sounds horrible. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not even joking, oh. man. They, they killed a cat. Uh, Why would you kill a cat? <laughs> uh, the cat survives. See, he's there in the blimp. So, anywho, it's, uh, after it's, it's down a life, the cat is down a life. Well, if he gets that's a green what? mushroom, he'll get a one up. No, that's three down, six to go. <laughs> but anywho, uh, once that's done, they head back home. And yeah, Applejack says she's sorry about the whole affair and. And says that you guys are pretty awesome and whatnot. 
And Granny Smith says, oh, you know what, Rainbow Dash, uh, the girls and I had a discussion and they want to make you an, honor- an honorary uh, horseshoe gal. And Rainbow Dash says yes, and they dress her up, and she's part of the crew, and they're going to go next moon. And what is next moon anyway? Well, a year from now. This makes sense. Also, there's one other thing about the Wild Blue Yonder and Rainbow Dash. We now know that the Pony Rainbow is more hardcore than the Equestria Girls Rainbow. Yep, yep, yep. Who had a panic attack (laughs) on uh, multiple rides. I think Rainbow Dash or EQG Rainbow Dash just psych herself out. <sighs> well, EQG Rainbow Dash doesn't have the ability to fly anytime she wants. Uh, yeah, true that. But anywho, but anywho, uh, with that, episode ends. So let's head into final thoughts or discussion, depending on what we kind of think. So yes, smoosh them together probably. What do you think, Silva? Well, a title called Granny's Gone Wild and uh, there's... There's hints that Big Macintosh probably just went and lived it up on his own. There's hints that Trixie may be the result of a one-night stand. My mind is going to all the wrong places for a show aimed at young women. What the hey? Yep, 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 yep. Oh, wow. What the hey? I don't know. I mean, I, I, I here am kind of innocent, and I'm thinking pure thoughts. Like, uh, probably it's one of those cases where Big Mac just says, yeah, uh, you guys, you gals go do what you want to do. I'm just going to go to the buffet and have fun and play some arcade games, maybe some classic Street Fighters and whatnot. I could see Big Mac Hadouken in. <laughs> Hadouken! 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 Wait, watch him play Smash Brothers. Falcon Punch! Falcon Punch! Falcon Punch! <laughs> yeah. And also, what? Uh, there's the Trixie thing. And as for Trixie, it's a bit hard. It does make sense on your explanation there, Silver. But I just want to think that Jackpot here is trying to be a good dad. Well, I don't know. I mean, it's up to our imaginations and perhaps uh, you get older and I think you kind of want fiction to reflect that real life is not always perfect Mm -hmm. or clean. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's out of place when talking about My Little Pony, a very idealized world. But... I'm a believer that ideals have the most meaning when they're tested. So if there's some blemishes or darker spots to this p- picturesque world, and you can explore that through Trixie and her family, I don't think there's a bad thing. Oh, true that, true that. I mean, as for me, like I mentioned before, I like to think on the positive side of things. So yay. Uh, you have to have the, that yin and yang dynamic. If I would agree with you 100%, uh, then we'll have no discussion. So that'll be boring. But yes, that's besides the point. And this episode title too, there's no going around it, man. <laughs> there is not. You can only embrace the madness yep. and watch as they hit on bellhops. Err, sunny boy. Oh my god. But yes. What What else? What else? You ever wanted to know what it's like to kiss without all those teeth in the way? Oh god, no. Oh my <laughs> god. Why does this... Okay. This reminds me, or this episode reminds me of a movie called uh, Grandma's Boy, something like that. Oh, that doesn't sound good. It's actually fun. Uh, it's about this one game tester. I think he got evicted from home and he has to find a place to live. And his grandma is kind of open and he has to live with his grandma and her other two friends. Well, anywho, uh, what, what, was, what was it again? Yes. What about the themes for this one, man? Like, I kind of like it. And I think the only downer here is Applejack playing tricks on Rainbow Dash. Well, that's kind of the thing. Because at the very end, the floating head of Applejack gives this knowing wink. It's like, did you plan this? Did you do this just to mess with Rainbow or teach her a lesson? <laughs> yeah. But you said you had problems with it? And what, this is reflecting of season 8? What was it? All right. Let's start with how much this is episodes proving Chancellor Naysay right. Rainbow is uh, hoisting off her teaching responsibilities on Applejack so she can go on a roller coaster. And she's not teaching her class. She's talking about the roller coaster. And we talked about this last podcast, but I think it bears repeating. A lot of the episodes starring the main six focus on them resisting parts or rejecting parts of the world. Pinkie Pie rejects the idea that Maude has a boyfriend and resists getting to know him. Mm-hmm. Uh, Applejack and Rainbow Dash resist just doing their job 
because they want the Teacher of the Month award. Rarity hasn't had a Rarity-centric episode, more Fluttershy's uh, role-playing episode. And Fluttershy has actively insulted people. This is a season where it seems like the main six aren't enhancing the world around them, but they're actually trying to resist it and have to wake up and, and realize it's not about them. They have to they have to accept, be more supportive, and celebrate the new, which is something we see often in Spike episodes. Owl's Well That Ends Well, for example. So that, and on their own, that's not a bad thing. That's actually, I think that's actually a good episode. But we've had that theme back to back to back to back this season. And after a while, I feel like it's actually doing our characters a disservice. Probably, but I don't know. I mean, to me, when I see Rainbow Dash, in Rainbow Dash's case here right now, it's more of uh, it's a jump cut scene, more of a comedic effect, and I don't know. In the class, it's it's Rainbow Dash just being Rainbow Dash before starting her class kind of deal. Uh, what else? As for the uh, as for future episodes, I don't touch them because that's for future episode kind of discussion. But for this episode itself, like I, it's like. Yes, uh, Rainbow Dash here is kind of selfish because she wants to ride the ride of her life because everybody on her team did it. She has to do it too. If not, she'll be an outsider. And, well, she's already been that with the Wonder Worlds once before. That was no fun. Uh-huh. And yeah, this is a roller coaster ride. And just imagine if she couldn't ride or didn't ride the ride and it closes down, uh, they will hang this over her head forever. Forever! And, yeah, I I don't know. I mean, I think the villain for this episode is just... Time. That and also Rainbow Dash. Rainbow Dash and her thoughts of Applejack scolding her. Well, (laughs) Applejack... uh, What does it say if Applejack underestimates her own grandmother? Uh, It's kind of being responsible here. I mean, the way I look at this episode, too, is that, yes, you are responsible for the elderly and whatnot, and you should take care of them. But you have to remember that they've been on this world a lot longer than you have. So don't underestimate your elders. And you could pick up or learn something from them kind of scenario here. And in this scenario here, you get to see a glimpse of that where Rainbow Dash is discovering certain things about the granny. For example, the horseshoe toss, the uh, dance floor thing... And last but not least, the roller coaster. So to me, I think the episode kind of um, dropped the ball in terms of letting Rainbow Dash um, learn a few things from the grandma. Quite possible. But that's my view and that's what I think of it. So yeah. But anywho, uh, let's see. Is there anything you want to add, Silver? Like I, this is kind of something new we're trying. I'd like to share a tweet from Big Jim. Oh, okay. This was... Uh, se- Saved online. With regards to this week's past episode and Jackpot. Yes, we were implying that he was indeed Trixie's dad. Although he abbreviates it TX, so apparently he's Texas's father. (laughs) It's not explicitly stated, and Hasbro may decide to change their minds down the line somewhere. But we thought it would be a fun nod to her parentage, and made sense that he was possibly washed-up Vegas-style stage magician with a penchant for older ladies. Whether or not he's aware he has a daughter is up for debate. I don't know, it didn't seem that washed up if everyone was coming to his show. Yeah, but still, uh, if you're a magician in Vegas and you only play in Vegas, you could be. What is David Copperfield doing anyway? Vegas? Ha <laughs> ha, see? Actually, I don't really know. How? What is David Copperfield up to? Yeah, and also, what is David Blaine doing? And you know what? What are all the other magicians doing? Okay, when not performing, David Copperfield manages his chain of 11 resort islands in the Bahamas. Oh my goodness, he's rich. I'm going to go out on a limb and say he's not washed up by any means. (laughs) Okay, I take that back. (laughs) He's awesome. (laughs) (laughs) But anywho, but anywho, um, my my thoughts on this episode is a lot of fun. Um, The lesson for this one is a bit um, hard to catch if you don't really look at it or if you can't really find it. It's not really stated here like a um, boss from an Ikuruga game where it has the big... A red area it says shoot me here so yes this episode was hard to find a lesson if i'm guessing it right yeah 
it's a little bit hard to find a lesson. And like I say, it can do Rainbow a disservice. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But also it plays the part on uh, Rainbow Dash being loyal and being responsible or trying to be responsible here. And failing miserably. Oh, yes, that is also true. It does show also that Rainbow has a conscience. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And sometimes that's, that doesn't get played up enough. And again, Magic Hallway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Touche, Magic Hallway. Yes, yes. Ah, uh, but anywho, Silver, what are we going to do next week? Well, we're going to do something different. Uh. Mowage. <laughs> Mowage is what brings us together. <laughs> oh, wow. We're, we're talking about Cadence and Shining Armor? No, they've been married and they have a kid. No, we're talking about something a bit more legendary. Oh. We're going to talk about The Princess Bride. Oh, that movie. That movie is awesome. That movie is awesome. I just, yeah, yeah. You know what? I'm not going to spoil it, but I had fun. I had fun. Good. That's good. So we're going to have fun talking about it. Yep, yep. So that will be next week's thing. And yes, uh, what else can we say? But stick around to catch our review of The Princess Bride next week. That is also a Patreon-sponsored episode. So yes, it'll be fun. It'll be fun. So anyway, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at mbshowgmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Silver, where can the good people find you? Well, you can find me on the YouTubes under Silver Quill and After the Fact on DeviantArt where I post uh, Pinkie Pie Says Goodnight comics and other such drawings. Well, if we're, we're heading towards yet another stint of double episode weekends oh that'll be rough silver have you heard the news down under <laughs> yes i come from a land down under <laughs> and you can find me every wednesday on equestria daily posting a comic review yo those things are fun to read awesomeness and also please subscribe and read us on itunes and youtube don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date and sit to radio and also like our facebook page yes we have a facebook page this seems to be a thing you can also catch us on PonyVLive.com. Also, if you'd like to support the show, you can do so at Patreon.com. With every support, you'll get a week's early access to this show, baby. Woo! Uh, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about thank yous, i like to thank Lurker Cat, Starstream, Master of Lag, Amy, Charles, Lucky Knight, and also Tristan. Thank you so much, guys. Don't stop being awesome. So anywho, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Zizir the Queen. And we'll guys catch you next week with another episode review. So with another episode of the Yes Show. See ya. Do you know what you can do with tapioca pudding? Besides oh eat it? Oh god, no. I do not want to know. <laughs> You're lost, sonny. Oh no. Why that title has bro... <laughs> Why the title? Because even Hasbro likes to go on the wild side every now and again. I appreciate that a lot. I appreciate that a lot. <laughs>